JD from New York here, and this right here is your number one source for all WWE news and rumors and 2K15 content right here on YouTube.com. And this is the one and only Off The Script. This is part number two, episode number 58 for your Saturday morning WrestleMania 31 weekend, man. It's going to be a big fucking weekend. I don't have any cold beverages, folks. I got actually some fucking Theraflu. My voice. My voice is no good, man. My throat is very sore. And if I don't have my voice for you people, I'm completely fucking worthless. So if you guys noticed yesterday, I hope you didn't notice. It was a very, very difficult task getting through 22 minutes of off the script. Usually I usually I do part one, and it's 30 minutes long, man. I had to cut it down. I couldn't do it anymore. My throat was bothering me. But I'm not going to let a little sore throat bother me, man. We're going to talk about some big, big fucking topics right now on part two. Most notably, The Undertaker and Sting. Will they be meeting face-to-face -face on Monday Night Raw following WrestleMania? I got all the details for you guys. Do not go anywhere. I also got news on Brock Lesnar and why Brock Lesnar chose to go on ESPN Sports Center. Why Vince McMahon allowed him to go on ESPN Sports Center and announce that he is re-signing a three-year deal with the WWE. All this plus so much more, man. Rey Mysterio contemplating retirement. WWE is afraid for Daniel Bryan's health and the real reason, which I find to be complete fucking bullshit, as to why they didn't put him in the WWE Championship match at WrestleMania. All this plus so much more right here on Off The Script, guys. Do not go anywhere. I got today and tomorrow lined up for you. Plus my WWE 2K15 WrestleMania 31 match simulations. If you guys are missing that, you're missing out on some fun times, man. A different way for me to do preview and predictions. For the biggest matches at WrestleMania, the top five biggest matches at WrestleMania, I'm giving to you in WWE 2K15. I'm simulating all the matches for you so we can determine a possible outcome. Go check that out. All the most recent ones that I did are linked down below with more to come today and tomorrow leading up to WrestleMania. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's the throat again. But I do want to say congratulations to each and every fucking one of you guys. You guys are absolutely fucking beasts. Beasts, I swear to fucking God. I told you guys to go out there on Twitter and get in touch with the fine people at WrestleCrates on Twitter. You guys blew them up to the point where they emailed me and said, listen, JD, we want to work with you. We love what you do here. We love your passion and dedication for the wrestling industry. Thank you guys very much over at WrestleCrates. I'm going to promote you guys even though you haven't come to me with some type of partnership yet. I would love to work with you guys. I'm going to be promoting you guys on here uh, on my Monday Night Raw reviews and on my pay-per-view reviews every month when a WWE pay-per-view ends. I'm going to be doing that for you guys, okay? I, I emailed you. You find people over at WrestleCrates. They can't send me promotional crates. I want to do unboxings. I want to give you guys some fun times. You know, if you guys got little children, you know, and they're into WWE, I definitely want to present some, you know, fine merchandise for you guys so that maybe you can buy your, your, your children something that they can enjoy. You know, I, I want something like that here, man. I, I want my first partnership to be something I really, you know, can get behind. I don't want to be one of these guys that come on here and promote something that they hate. You know, simply because it gives them a fucking paycheck at the end of the week. I don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that. I believe that these guys have something that's really going to be successful. There's a lot of fucking rabid, hungry wrestling fans out there, including myself. So they can't send me promotional crates, being that I am only a 25,000 subscriber channel. That may upset some of you guys who are very loyal and dedicated to me. And trust me, I appreciate all your love and support. I really do. Okay, without you guys, this channel and this series and everything else I do right here on YouTube is, is nothing without you guys. Okay, they can't send me a promotional crate every month. Uh, they rather, obviously, and I know for business wise, it's going to be a better marketing for them to get it to a channel with 100, 200,000 subscribers. I understand that. Okay, I, I took a chance in asking them, and that's what happened. But I emailed them back, and they want to work with me. Okay, due to the the, uh, the fine people that you are, you know, reaching out to them and tweeting them saying that they should sponsor me. So I came up with the idea. Their ultimate crate is $29.99 a month. I said, you know what? 
I want to I want to be a part of this and I want to help you guys out. I you know I want you guys to help me out as well. Okay. So what I did for twenty nine ninety nine, I, I shot them an idea. Why don't you give me the ultimate crate uh, from Wrestle Crates every month for fifty percent off? And uh, we can get that going. And if you guys like it, you can obviously go and support them and subscribe and do all this shit. So I'm working on that, but it's all thanks to you guys. I will let you guys know how that works out in the end. So thank you all very much. I just wanted to get that out of the way, all right? And I know some goons are out there. JD, enough with this fucking bullshit. Get on with the news. What about Sting? What about The Undertaker? I know, guys. Calm down. It's my show. I talk about what I want. This is very important to me, all right? But moving on. Regardless of all that, I do have news on Sting. And I do have news on The Undertaker. Both Sting and The Undertaker will have their hands full this coming Sunday as The Icon takes on Triple H at WrestleMania while The Undertaker squares off against Bray Wyatt. Now, however, a new report indicates there may be more to come from the two even after WrestleMania ends. According to PW Insider, both The Undertaker and Sting have been booked for Monday's edition of Monday Night Raw. What does this mean, people? What does this mean? Rumors have spread for the past two years now that the two would be destined for a WrestleMania match. There had at one point been plans to make the match happen this year at WrestleMania. Those, those, those plans were obviously changed with The Undertaker squaring off against Wyatt instead of Sting in the former WCW Stars first match back and uh, in the WWE, okay? There was a period of, period of time where it was so unsure as to whether Undertaker would be even able to go at WrestleMania this year, but the 50-year-old veteran appears to be primed and ready. While the two are both booked for the show, this does not guarantee they will both end up starting a program together. So take it with a grain of salt, people. Okay, take it with a grain of salt. However, with next year's WrestleMania emanating from AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas, many have speculated the two Texas natives could be destined to go head-to-head -head once more. The Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal was also pushed to the WrestleMania pre-show. Thank God. Thank God. I'm so happy about that. Excuse me. That was never even fucking a question in my mind as to what match should be on the pre-show. It was always going to be that. Thank God that is not on the actual program. Goes to show you how much... Uh, importance the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal has to WWE at WrestleMania. Thank God that's on the, the, the pre-show. That was announced on Thursday. Uh, the assumption being that both Undertaker Wyatt and Triple H Sting will be given more time to shine on WrestleMania 31 night, okay? Now, I am stoked for this, but I do want you guys to take this with a grain of salt. Undertaker and Sting right now are apparently both booked for Monday Night Raw. I don't see what Undertaker or Sting could be doing following WrestleMania. All right, if Sting beats Triple H, which I think he will, um, I don't see him talking about Triple H. I, actually, he could talk about his experience in the ring and finally beating Triple H and shutting him up and this and that. And then he could move on to The Undertaker, you know? Business is left undone, man. He wants The Undertaker at WrestleMania. This is something that's been very vocal between both men. You know, the streak is no longer in play, but regardless of that, Sting, they, they could play off Sting's, you know, desire for The Undertaker at WrestleMania and just build it one year in advance. That's all they got to do. You know, take the road with The Rock and John Cena, similar paths. This is The Undertaker and Sting. Build it a year out, okay? Make them, you know, appear on WWE programming throughout the year sporadically, just fucking planting seeds here and there about their impending match at WrestleMania 32. I like it. It needs to happen. There's no other match that we want to see in a retirement match for The Undertaker. You just, there's nothing else. They had plans or they had ideas. They had the chance to do John Cena versus The Undertaker in a retirement match if John Cena was still in the WWE Championship picture. You know, Jim Ross's idea was that John Cena could enter WrestleMania 32 with the WWE Championship and we could, you know, we could get that match. Undertaker versus John Cena for the WWE Championship with the streak versus the title, man. That would have been an unbelievable fucking match that everyone would have been on the edge of their seat. Superman Cena versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania if The Undertaker was still undefeated. Now that the streak is no more, this is the next best thing. Sting, Undertaker, one year out. They're both scheduled to, to appear on Monday Night Raw, but nothing is penciled in as of right now of them crossing paths. I hope so, but 
if I was in charge, Undertaker Sting would headline and main event WrestleMania 32 in Dallas, and that would close the show. Absolutely no question about it. If you want to fill seats in that stadium, 105,000, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, okay? WWE is stacking WrestleMania 32 with legends, and they're going to need to stack it with as many legends as possible because WWE has failed to create new stars that people are completely invested in. There may be, you know, popular guys on the roster. There may be guys like Ziggler and Wyatt that people just adore, Ambrose, etc., etc., okay? But those guys are not going to fit, uh, uh, you know, 105,000 people in that stadium. They're not going to fill that stadium. Plain and simple. You need guys like The Undertaker. You need high-profile matches with Undertaker, Sting, HBK versus Shawn Michaels, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin coming back and going against John Cena, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Brock versus uh, The Rock. Those are the matches that are being rumored right now. Those, th that's what I have in my mind. But as of yesterday that I reported, it's going to be Lesnar and The Rock at WrestleMania. And that's something Vince McMahon is dead set on having to have happen, okay? But that's what's going to need to happen to fill AT&T Stadium in Dallas. Undertaker versus Sting could be the very first seed planted for WrestleMania 32. And being that this could be the biggest pay-per-view in WWE creation in history, WWE needs to start planting seeds now to get everyone, you know, ready for WrestleMania. You want tickets to be sold out like that when they go on sale, whenever they do? You need to have fucking matches teased and lined up immediately so people know what they're getting into. That's what needs to happen, and I hope... Both Sting and The Undertaker cross paths on Monday Night Raw. It should be fucking phenomenal. And Monday Night, Monday Night Raw, usually after WrestleMania, is always the hottest fucking show of the year, excluding WrestleMania. Man, it's always the hottest Monday Night Raw of the year. So it's going to be exciting and must-see, regardless of if Sting and The Undertaker even show up. All right. Regarding why, da why Daniel Bryan is in the Intercontinental title ladder match at WrestleMania 31, instead of the WWE World Heavyweight title picture... It's not that the WWE don't see him as a big part of the company or a top competitor, but one of the reasons is that there is still major concern over his health. Brian chose to undergo a unique form of rehabilitation for his injury last year, and there is a strong fear within WWE that his injuries could become reoccurring issues due to the rehab that he did. There's a concern that... The rehab Brian chose is not a long-term permanent fix and just a short-term fix that could cause problems to relapse. It's likely that Brian would be in a more prominent position at WrestleMania this year if WWE officials weren't worried that the elbow issues will come back. Brian's situation was compared to by one source as if it was Kurt Angle having several non-invasive surgeries on his neck years ago but over time, Angle ended up having a lot of other issues stemming from the neck injury. This is fucking bullshit. Absolutely fucking bullshit. And do you want to know why? And it's the most glaring fucking reason why, guys. You can see it. I can see it. If you got eyes right here, you can see it yourself, okay? WWE did not want Daniel Bryan in the main event because they did not want Daniel Bryan in the main event. They are kissing the ass of Roman Reigns, and Vince McMahon wants Roman Reigns as the next face of the WWE right now. That he's so blind, and he's so deaf to all the Daniel Bryan chants going on, even when Roman Reigns is out there. Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, the build for this pay-per-view match, this main event, was nothing to do with Roman Reigns, it was all Paul Heyman. And now that Brock Lesnar's contract is all settled, it was all built around his contract. Everyone was talking about his contract, okay? Roman Reigns is the guy Vince wanted there, and he was going to do at he was going to do anything to get him there, to make sure he was there. Okay? Daniel Bryan was not going to be in the WWE title picture because WWE chose they chose to have Daniel Bryan put over Roman Reigns in a failed attempt and that got them nowhere. They used Daniel Bryan instead of using him in the correct way, which should have been Bryan versus Lesnar at WrestleMania. So instead of doing that, they used him to get their man, Vince McMahon's wanted guy, over, and it failed, okay? If they were so worried about Daniel Bryan and his injuries, why is he in the most dangerous match that there could be 
a multi-man, seven-man match with ladders at WrestleMania. With a fucking belt hanging above the ring, man. You're worried about his health, but you're putting him in a fucking seven-man ladder match at WrestleMania. Yeah, I believe this story like I believe my best friend slept with fucking Jennifer Lopez last night and had fucking a sex romp all night. No, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen, bro. I don't believe it for one bit. The reason why Daniel Bryan is not in the WWE title picture at WrestleMania or in a more prominent role is because Vince McMahon didn't want him there. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. That's it. I don't believe this story for one bit. That's all I got to say about that. All right, let me know what you guys think about that one. NXT news and WrestleMania news all in one. Last Friday, it was noted NXT would be holding a tournament at WrestleMania Access in Santa Clara, California. The tournament, which would involve Adrian Neville, Hideo Itami, Finn Balor, and Tyler Breeze, would determine which one of the men would go on to WrestleMania and participate in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which is now on the pre-show. Thank fucking Christ. It was said that Neville would be the rumored one and the rumored favorite for the tournament, given that he is expected to be called up to the main roster very soon. However, it appears plans have changed, and a new man gained the crown. Instead, Itami took home the honor of heading to WrestleMania as he knocked both uh, Neville and Baylor off en route to the title. Baylor defeated Breeze earlier in the day. Following the win, Itami was greeted by new WWE Hall of Famer and Japanese icon, Tatsumi Fujinami. I don't know who he is, but apparently he's going into the WWE Hall of Fame. But Hideo Itami will be in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Sucks for Itami that it's now on the pre-show. But he gets a taste of that WrestleMania environment. So congratulations to Hideo Itami. I just hope the fans, the real fans at WrestleMania, gravitate towards Itami and realize that he's got some prime fucking talent. That he knows what he's doing. He's ready to go. And that just himself and his character and his, his moveset, his persona... Gets over with the WWE audience. I just hope that is the case. Because I don't want to see any more of these NXT guys. Do so well in NXT. Be treated so well in NXT. And then go up to the main roster. And are just fucking devoured. By the clueless fucking clowns. That run WWE's main roster. That's all I want. So hopefully Itami gets over with the fans. Congratulations to him. And it should be nice to see Itami at WrestleMania. Who do I think is going to win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal? I have a... Sneaking suspicion that Curtis Axel is going to win it. If not Axel, I'm going with Damian Sandow. Damian Sandow and The Miz could be the last two guys in the Battle Royal. You can give Sandow his WrestleMania moment by finally breaking away from The Miz and freeing himself from that burden. That's my prediction on that. All right. The latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter has shed some light on how Brock Lesnar signing a new three-year contract with the WWE affects some of the outcomes to WrestleMania 31 on March 29th. As previously reported, Lesnar announced his new deal with WWE on ESPN's Sports Center on March 24th, and we will see him remain with the company until 2018. Dave Meltzer lays out how Lesnar's new deal should affect the original plans drawn up by Vince McMahon and other WWE executives when they were initially penning out the finish to WrestleMania 31's uh, main event by saying, Brock Lesnar signing a new three-year deal with a raise changes at least one dynamic of WrestleMania. This is all coming from Dave Meltzer, folks. Paid subscription. Whatever the finish originally was to be, no matter who goes over, Lesnar has to be protected not just this year, but for the long haul. A key to the three-year contract aspect is that there is no pressing issue about him going babyface. To get full value out of Lesnar, he needs a strong face run at the end, but the end is now a long time away. There was only one logical ending if he was leaving, which was Reigns over in dramatic fashion with Reigns selling a lot early and coming back with a decisive win. Now Lesnar with his contract is far more valuable than the title. He can keep the title with the idea of making WWE title matches more special because they are so much more rare. But that has been the concept since SummerSlam and they just haven't made it work so far. The problem is, somebody should lose to Seth Rollins within a few months since they haven't spent all this time building him up and the briefcase and linking him as the authority star and future of wrestling for him not to cash in. 
A lot depends on Lesnar's dates. If Lesnar isn't wrestling again until SummerSlam, he may have to lose the title to Reigns or beat Reigns and lose to Rollins either at Mania or Raw simply because he won't be around after WrestleMania. Although he could lose at any time because he doesn't have to have a match to do so and probably wouldn't do a match for Rollins to take it from him with subterfuge and he can be brought into TV at any time. But Lesnar being strong may also be so important to justify that contract and the plans for Rollins and the belt may have to be delayed. It may make things interesting with all these options, but I just don't see one that one happening. Putting the U.S. title on John Cena and the IC title on Daniel Bryan, which were the plans as of last week, that they, that, that they are trying to elevate those titles to where they can be main event uh, arena shows so you don't have to have the touring world champion Brock Lesnar show up at the house events. If Lesnar doesn't have the title, he ha... <coughs> Excuse me. If Lesnar doesn't have the title, he has to have super hot opponents. And Cena and Triple H have been done enough. While Austin, Rock, and The Undertaker are mania matches or not at all. So you're left with Reigns and Rollins and going forward, Lesnar would be better as the challenger against them than defending. He can lose, of course, with the right storyline, but it has to be due to a screw job that leads to a huge match. Seth Rollins only has until the summer to cash in the briefcase, and he's being pushed too strong to fail on the cash-in as the corporate guy. For next year's WrestleMania, whether he is champion or not, one would think he would have to face The Rock, Steve Austin, Undertaker, or Reigns, and as noted, unless things change, it would be The Rock. But if that does fall through, it has to be a match that Vince McMahon believes is money, and a match or a part of a package of matches that add 25,000 more tickets next year than this year. With three more years, Lesnar literally has to be established as an all-time great for his value to make that deal still worthwhile two years from now. In addition to this, WWE had Lesnar announce his new deal on SportsCenter to purposely make fans question what the outcome of WrestleMania would be. Will, Les will Lesnar still lose the WWE World Heavyweight Championship to Reigns? Will he turn face and Reigns turn heel? Will Reigns align with Paul Heyman and leave Lesnar on his own to battle, to battle back against the odds? Will Lesnar beat Reigns and lose to Rollins via cash-in? All these questions now stem from Lesnar re-signing with the WWE. A lot of you guys came to me and said, JD, don't you think Lesnar now resigning makes things a little bit too predictable? No, they actually make things a lot more unpredictable. We don't know what WWE is going to do, and all I know, all I know is this might not be the greatest main event of any WrestleMania that we've seen, but it certainly has drama, intrigue, and it's got everyone fucking talking, and that's all Vince McMahon wants, man. I can't even give you what my opinion is going to be on this. I think Lesnar, uh, you know, honestly, I, at first I was thinking Lesnar should retain the title since he's now signed that new deal. And why would you have him go on there and be the face of the company and fucking have his mug plastered all over fucking television with the WWE Championship? Why would you have him do that and then go out and lose to WrestleMania or lose to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania or lose to Seth Rollins? I understand Seth Rollins has the fucking cash in, the briefcase, but it wouldn't be the first time that someone has failed a cash in. Rollins can always win the title at some point in his career. Does it need to necessarily be now? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, you know, Rollins is not a Sandow. I don't think WWE is going to bury a Rollins like they did Sandow when he failed to cash in against John Cena. I think Rollins, even if even if he fails to cash in, would be great. You know, everybody would be exploding and Brock Lesnar would be more of a face. And uh, I don't think Rollins is going to ne necessarily be buried. I think he would you know, he's got the capability to bounce back from something like that and just be re-elevated again to get to that point where he is right now. I don't see him slipping down the ladder if he loses the briefcase and fails a cash-in. Uh, I see him maintaining that. Rollins is so hot that a loss isn't going to do anything for him. But I know where Dave Meltzer is coming from. I, I understand what he's talking about. They don't want to blow all this investment into, into Rollins and have him just fail a cash-in. So I honestly don't know what's going to happen. I told my best friend on the phone yesterday... I was saying Lesnar's going to walk away with it. I do think Lesnar beats Reigns at WrestleMania, but I do see Seth Rollins walking out of WrestleMania, either at WrestleMania or on Monday Night Raw 
on Monday Night Raw with the WWE Championship. At the end of it all, I think Seth Rollins is going to be your new WWE Champion. Let me know what you guys think about that one down below, okay? Now, more on Brock Lesnar. The latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter has provided an inside look as to why WWE had Brock Lesnar announce his new contract on ESPN on March 24th. As previously reported, Lesnar signed a new three-year deal, blah, 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 and will be under the contract with the WWE till 2018. Meltzer claims WWE wanted Lesnar to announce his new contract on ESPN publicly before WrestleMania in order to make the fans question the outcome to the main event of the World Championship match on March 29th between Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Initially, with Lesnar assumed finish with WWE on March 30th, 2015, WWE executives, namely Vince McMahon, wanted Lesnar to drop the title to Reigns at WrestleMania 31 in a passing of the torch from one proverbial badass to the other. I don't like the way they, they uh, worded that, but that's that's exactly what's written here in this article. All right, I don't see Roman Reigns as a badass whatsoever. To me, he's a fucking pathetic joke, but that's just me and moving on. However, Reigns has not been received well by fans. Well, no shit. No shit. And was the one being booed out of the arena during the final segment of the WrestleMania Go Home Show edition of Monday Night Raw on March 23rd. Lesnar was being cheered by the WWE Universe, which in the old days would mean that their roles would be reversed and a double turn would take place, making Lesnar the babyface and Reigns the heel. WWE hasn't yet pulled the trigger on making Reigns a heel just yet, even though his reaction is vying for such a change in character. While Lesnar is slated to turn babyface soon, during his upcoming three-year tenure with the company, many are questioning if WrestleMania 31 will be the catalyst for this change or not. Again, more from Dave Meltzer about Brock Lesnar turning babyface. WWE wanted Lesnar to announce the signing to put the finish of the main event into question. Having the announcement done on ESPN does help interest in the show, but with Lesnar becoming a major news story in the final weekend, opening up the speculation as to who will win in the main event. If anything, Lesnar deciding to stay guarantees him a gigantic baby face to the live is guarantees him being a gigantic baby face to the live crowd in the match on Sunday. And unless something positively brilliant in the other direction happens, even more so at Raw on Monday, it's been clear all along that Lesnar uh, and his run should end with a baby face turn. There was a subtle hint on Raw when Lesnar glared at Paul Heyman during a promo the night before that could be taken as a tease. The idea that Heyman, who has put over Reigns super strong as the second toughest guy in modern pro wrestling history. Please, let me fucking vomit all over my fucking table right here. Uh, on the off the script table. Really. The second toughest guy in modern day pro wrestling history behind Lesnar. Give me a fucking break. I know it's Paul Heyman and he's scripted to say that. But please, let me clean up the fucking vomit. Fucking Christ, alright? So, he's the second toughest guy in modern day pro wrestling history behind Lesnar. He could always turn on Lesnar, Heyman, and go with Reigns, and that is always a possibility. It would be similar to what he did in 2002 to uh, Lesnar with The Big Show and what he did later with CM Punk. So, it probably wouldn't be such a simple version. That would at least put WWE's television and pay-per-view audience aligned with the storyline instead of at odds with the storyline. So, that is that. All right. And finally, guys, one more thing uh, to close this part of Off the Script, episode number 58. News on Sheamus returning at WrestleMania. WWE holds its biggest event of the year, WrestleMania 31, on Sunday, March 29th, in Santa Clara, California, at Levi Stadium. With the event just a couple of days away, there is no confirmation on Sheamus that he will be part of the show of shows. For more than a month now, WWE has been hyping his return with a series of vignettes. However, Sheamus did not appear on the road to WrestleMania, and there is no set date that has been announced for his return. Previous reports stated that Sheamus is scripted to be off WWE programming until the day of WrestleMania. It appears that WWE's plans remain unchanged, and, Sh and Sheamus will indeed return at WrestleMania. According to a report from F4W Online, Sheamus is currently penciled in the script for WrestleMania 31, though what capacity Sheamus will serve at the event is still unknown. Contrary to earlier fan speculation, it appears Sheamus will not be a part of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. The Battle Royal is now set at an even 20 participants to presume final field. Additionally, 
uh, right now uh, with The Miz, Damian Sandow, Curtis Axel, Hideo Itami, amongst others, okay? Additionally, the bout is now slated for the WrestleMania kickoff, airing at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the WWE Network. WWE's plans could definitely change as there are always last-minute changes to the show's script. The WWE Universe will have to simply wait and see if Sheamus does indeed return on March 29th. Now, I don't know what's going on with Sheamus. I'm not really sure if it makes much sense to debut him now back at WrestleMania. I think it would be best served for Monday Night Raw. But, if you're going to debut him back at WrestleMania and you want him to make a big splash, Andre the Giant Memorial is not the way. Attacking Daniel Bryan is not the way. I see title ladder match is not the way. What you want to do, especially if you want to get Sheamus as a heel, all right, have him interfere in the John Cena Rusev match for the United States Championship. Rusev loses the belt to John Cena, and after the match, Cena gets beat down by Sheamus. And there you go. Sheamus is now a full fledged heel, and they confront each other and battle for the United States Championship on Monday Night Raw, setting up that feud and uh, whatever else may happen there. I think that's the best way to go about it. If you want to debut him on WrestleMania 31 and have him scripted into the show, if not, just wait till Monday Night Raw where the crowd's going to be fucking hot and coming off a hot pay-per-view that is WrestleMania. But if you want to put him on the show, I think attacking John Cena would be the best way to do that, all right? That is part two, guys. Thank you very much for watching me. I got more news tomorrow. I got news on AJ Lee. Heat on AJ Lee going into WrestleMania 31 and Rey Mysterio contemplating retirement after being mixed in with this death of a Mexican wrestler down in Tijuana, man. I got the full story on that. Don't go anywhere for part three. I also have more WWE 2K15 simulation matches coming up uh, later today and tomorrow after off the script leading into WrestleMania 31 review later on Sunday night. But if you guys missed any of my simulation matches, everything you need is linked down below in the description. Go and check that out. If you guys want to go see Mr. 9 to 5 compete on uh, MCW Mayhem Mania on 2K15, link for that show on YouTube.com is linked down below as well. If you guys want more additional wrestling content, Joe Cronin Show and the guys over at Chair Shot Reality, uh, Justin Labar, Josh Eisenberg, and Brian Goulish, Chair Shot Reality at WrestleZone.com, as well as the guys over at WrestleRumble.com. If you guys want to win a grand prize of $500, on WrestleMania 31 Sunday, watching the pay-per-view. Please go and sign up. Link is down below. WrestleRumble.com. Put your knowledge to the test. Have some fun guessing the winners and losers of WrestleMania. I'll be playing along, and I would greatly appreciate you guys playing along as well, supporting those fine folks over at WrestleRumble.com. I'm JD. I'm going to go relax, man. My throat's fucking killing me after this episode, but I got through it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on Sunday for the final episode of Off the Script, part number three for this weekend, and then we are on to WrestleMania. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching, and hit that like button, man. Thank you very much.